so this is a question that comes up sometimes. Uh, people will say, oh, you know, I, I teach many 18 to 22 year olds every year at, at Harvard and UCLA, and they are kind of sexual beginners themselves, right? They're kind of, they're interested in, in their sexuality and, they, and they're very, they wanna learn, they wanna understand, and inevitably this question comes up. So um, the, the answer to the question of pleasure um, is I think pretty simple. I mean, it's pretty, well, first of all, we can't ask non-human animals um, whether they're experience, experiencing pleasure, right? So we don't have the language. But we can look for, for the kind of um, physical signs that we see in ourselves when we know that we're having pleasure. And so, um, uh, and also, it, it is pretty well established that the reason, the sort of evolutionary reason that our bodies have the capacity to feel pleasure is that pleasure evolved to um, direct animals, our animal ancestors, toward activities that um, are fitness enhancing. In other words, to direct our animal ancestors toward activities which increase their chances of survival and increase their reproductive output. And let's face it, sex is pleasurable. And it's that's a big motivation for why humans engage in sex. And so it is... Um, it is absolutely logical, and I don't think um, any reasonable biologist would doubt that um, given the um, very similar um, biology and physiology and anatomy of, of uh, sexual of, of genitals and of um, sexual physiology in at least mammals and birds and probably all, rep, all um, vertebrates, that, uh, that pleasure is occurring when animals are engaging in sex to the extent that that is a kind of, what's called kind of a proximate motivation. So animals are, um, uh, I think that is not, um, that's not a leap. Orgasm is a little bit harder, right? Because orgasm is something that, um, you know, even if we could show physiologically that components of, of what contributes to human orgasm was happening in animals, we would still be missing that, that you know, what do you feel? We wouldn't be able to um, get that. But Here's what we can get. And by the way, what I'm about to tell you, this observation was observed by one of the most iconic physicians in history, Galen. So Galen was this um, second century Greek physician and surgeon, you know, and he um, he's responsible for, for all kinds of um, amazing observations. But um, he, there's, a, there's a quote where he says, all animals um, after coitus are kind of droopy. Right, um, and with the exception of of women and roosters, okay, I won't even get into the um, the male exceptionalism um, baked into that statement. But what he's describing is a post copulatory somnolence, right? That's very medical sounding, but that's that post uh, sex, particularly for the male, sleepiness, and it's not post sex; it's post orgasmic. So. Following orgasm, that, that is a pretty typical response. So what is the neurobiology of that? What's the neurochemistry that creates that sleepiness uh, after sex? Well, it's a combination of serotonin, oxytocin, and prolactin. And prolactin, so those are all hormones and neurohormones. And prolactin particularly seems to make um, males sleepy um, after, after orgasm, after ejaculation. <laughs> 